Hey guys, welcome back to Loft Sports. I'm Tyler. I'm Seth. Today we're going to be asking the question, I'm sure most of you are asking yeah. after this first weekend, can the XFL survive? Yeah, I mean, kind of, in, you know, a lot of people are anticipating this. What's it going to be like? What are the new rule changes going to look like? How's the general football going to actually look as far as the quality being played? Uh, I know for me personally, just kind of a snapshot take, I kind of loved it. It was something kind of refreshing. It was nice that they had actual commentators like Joel yep. Platt was doing games and Steve Levy. Yep. It was on ESPN ABC, and ABC Fox. and Fox, the yep. networks you want to be on, the networks you want to watch games on. It was a very good debut weekend. Yeah, I thought the environments were good. Most of the stadiums were filled. I like that they're playing them in... Not all football stadiums, like the Giants played at MetLife, but a sure. couple of the other fields, I thought they'd play at like local colleges, kind of like the AAF did. Sure. Some of them were soccer fields, which actually works, and I'll tell you why, because it looks like the crowd is more into it when the stadium is full. Right. So rather than have 20,000 people in an 80,000-person stadium, mm -hmm. having 20,000 people in a 20,000-seat stadium yep. just makes the environment feel like it's a competitive well, game. Too, a lot of times in the soccer stadiums, the fans are actually really close to the. I'm going to throw the term out there: the pitch. Oh God. <laughs> they're they're really close to the grounds and everything like that. It's a much more. I'm going to show my like of soccer a little bit. It's much more romantic in that sense. It's more intimate. the The fans are that much closer to the action. Everything like that, they can get into it more. So that was cool. That was cool. And I liked the rules. The kickoff is really appealing to me. Yeah, you still get the excitement of the kick return, but you limit player injuries because the right. the guys are only five yards apart instead of running at each other. Full and speed. that's where a lot of those terrible injuries mm -hmm. happen, where the careers are literally threatened. Um, there's a few college players in the last five, ten years whose careers were over because of that. Yep. You just run down the field. The game people are too big, too strong, too fast these days to just literally be on a dead sprint and collide. It's like a car crash. It basically. is. And also I noticed too, almost every time there's a special teams play in the NFL or even big time college football, there's always a penalty. Somebody holds, yeah. somebody clips, block in the back. Yeah. When you're lining up five yards away from each other, it's less likely you're gonna get beat. Well, it's kind of it's kind of into like just a normal offensive play where someone says there's holding on every play. Everyone's right there. It's yeah. not so open. So you not saying you can get away with a little bit more, but they're not gonna police that as much as the other stuff you normally see. Yeah, and guys can change directions. It mm -hmm. was entertaining. I really like too the extra point. Um, yeah. like after you score, you haven't. There's no kicking of any kind. It's either you take a one point try from the two, a two from the five, or a three point try from the ten. Right. I mean, I really like that just because. I mean, I'll be honest. When we're watching games, whether it's college football, NFL, when it's the extra point, that's when I'm checking my phone. That's when I'm going checking to the score. bathroom. That's when yep. I'm getting snacks. Whatever the case is, I don't care about the extra point. That just is another thing to keep fans engaged. And it seems like. That's what this whole kind of branding is, is just keeping fans engaged throughout the whole game. Kickoffs, because yep. it's not just going to be an automatic touchback, everything like that. It's actually penalized for touchbacks. Exactly. Now. It's just all about engaging. And it's just, we have to touch on it eventually in this video. I mean, Vince McMahon is a genius. Mm -hmm. Whether you know him or not from his running of WWF than WWE as it's known now for 30, 40 plus years now, the guy knows what people want. I mean, he's made a living out of, for 30, 40 years yeah. now, of a fake product that people still get fully vested emotionally in. The guy's a marketing genius. He's a he's a genius when it comes to branding. I think he's got it right this time. Yep. And unlike the AAF, which we're unfortunately have to compare him to mm -hmm. here, he has a financial backing to where yep. he can take the losses necessary because everyone knows to make money, a lot of times you have to lose money. He can take that hit. Yeah, and his partnership with ESPN and Fox was great. Mm -hmm. It piggybacks a little bit on that wrestling like you touched on, but he yep. can market for both products with each other. Um, you're going to see wrestling commercials during these XFL games and, and vice, vice versa. versa. Yep. Um, some great commentary. And I like also the rule changes. It, it's kind of meant to be a higher scoring and a faster mm -hmm. pace game, almost like a basketball on grass. Sure. And with the three-point try, 
Now it makes a nine-point game a one-possession sure. game. There's yeah. also different rules, less timeouts. Uh, inside of two minutes, the clock stops after every play for a certain amount of time. The clock doesn't stop on incompletions, too. Yep, so the, game, the games are shorter. It's not yep. going to be four hours long, but that's okay. It's I, all about quick engagement and just giving fans football. Yep. The question is going to be how the ratings look in week two. I actually yep. Googled today out of curiosity. Last year, week one, the AAF had almost 3 million views for mm -hmm. the first game, which is pretty good Yeah, um, for, for a first-time ever event. The week two ratings were just over a million, so yeah. almost three times less. This year, the XFL week one, the first game was D.C. and Seattle. It had 3.3 million, mm -hmm. so even more views than the AAF. Yep. The question is, is in week two, do those views stay closely to the same, or do they drop off? See, now... It might drop off a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be anything like yeah. the what it was with the AF. Because here's the thing. When I'm flipping through channels, I rarely ever stop on CBS Sports Network, which True. is where the AF was on. Everybody who loves sports is checking Fox, Fox ESPN. ABC, yep. ESPN, just for some sort of sports. You're more likely to catch ratings, even if it's for five minutes. So whether or not more people are invested or, or whatever the case is, there's probably going to be a little bit of a drop off. There may, it may even be an increase depending yeah. on how popular it gets. It's going to be really interesting to see, like you said, but I don't anticipate it dropping down. I much. think the key is, is this first year, because they have the financial backing, unlike the AAF, the AAF, mm -hmm. if it was around for a second year, I think it would grow in popularity. And I think that's the key. The XFL may not hit it out of the park year one, no. but if it can survive the first couple well, years, then traction will grow and people will start to say, you know, I kind of dig this league. It may not be the NFL, but See, it's still and that's football. the point I'm going to. The AAF was trying to be like NFL Junior. Yeah. The XFL is trying to be the XFL. Without changing just like, it too much. Though. Right. Just like the CFL is the CFL yeah. and not the NFL. I could potentially see this working in that sense, almost like a CFL does, where yeah. it's not ever going to threaten the NFL, but it's its own thing. It has a survivability to it. It can be stable. It can make money and give fans football during the time of year where there is none. Yeah, and I and when it, when they did this in 01 the first time, McMahon went after the NFL. Like, we're going to overrule mm -hmm. you as what football. This yeah. is real man football. Yeah. This time he's been much more humble, a lot more reserved. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is not rivaling and he's the NFL. he's been planning this for everyone. Yeah, and, and he's learned from his mistakes. He's not trying to be the NFL or be right. bigger than. He's trying to coexist. One thing I've always struggled with is the time of year to have a second football league. Mm -hmm. Can you do it in the spring when you're going against March Madness, the NBA, MLB's getting ready to start, the NHL? Yeah. When this thing is in its playoffs in April, there's going to be a lot of other sports sure. going on. So that's where I'm going to be interested to see what the ratings in the playoffs look like. I know it's not the NFL, but... And I know some people still watch baseball, basketball. The NBA is kind of at an all-time high for their views and yep. popularity. But football is still America's sport. People will tune in and have a beer on a Sunday, let, sit on the couch, and want to watch football. True. I, don't, I think that carries over in the spring. I don't see another time you can have it because you can't have it during the fall. And I don't really think you can have it during the summer because during the summer, one, people are doing more stuff. With They're their time outside. everything yeah. like that. And also, there's a lot of preseason going on in the NFL, and that type of coverage can dominate. Well, it's the, the perfect is time also frame. It's grueling in the summer. It's, this is the perfect time frame for this to work. I think if there's ever a second league in America that actually works, it has to be in the spring. I like that it's shorter, too. I don't think a super 16, 17-week league would work. No. Um, which is funny because I think the CFL is about 17 or 18 weeks. But that's it's a whole different that's, animal. Yeah. I, I do think this time of the year can work because it's going to end right before the draft. Mm -hmm. So people will start to get back into the football mindset of, oh, yeah. And for the players, which we haven't touched on yet, this is an opportunity for them to Absolutely. shine. And then the draft comes and then Absolutely. these teams might say, you know what, we don't need to draft a running back because this guy for the Seattle Dragons – 
we might just go ahead sure. and sign him. So it's a second chance league for some players, but it's also a developmental league yeah. like the NBA D League for the guys that don't get drafted. They're still 22, 23. They can have a few miles left on them before their yeah. bodies wear out I mean, and get signed by a team. I mean, there were noticeable names. I mean, I know not everyone can follow just, or follows college football the way mm -hmm. you and I do, but there were a lot of recognizable names. Absolutely. Like, oh, yeah, he played here. Aaron Murray and Cardell exactly. Jones. And, and Landry Jones is going to be the quarterback. He didn't play yesterday because he was hurt, but Landry Jones. Bob Stoops is the coach at Dallas. See, like, there's just all these names that, you know, you know from watching college football mm -hmm. that it is kind of that second chance for them to get a look from the NFL. And it'll be curious to see if, if this continues, how many players actually get a chance. But the actual football call, I liked it. I thought it was it wasn't good. Bad. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was better than the AAF to I be agree. honest. I agree. And the rule changes are such that it adds something new, but it's mm -hmm. still football and it's not anything extreme. All right, thank you guys so much. We'll continue to do some more videos throughout the spring. Uh, we got March Madness coming up, among other things. Thank you guys so much. This is Loft Sports signing off.